Hello everyone and welcome back to Halloween 2. So we're continuing where we left off. We found one riddle that was uh, set up by the FPC in uh, Overlook area and now we're about to try to figure out a riddle that's over here in the ranger's cabin and it looks like it's set up that somebody lived here or like I theorized that the FEC was staying here in this cabin while they conducted the research of the area. So let's get into it. I don't have the code just yet for the computer, but I'm sure that it's in one of the files here. Um, maybe after we complete the riddle, something will appear that will give us the information we need to unlock it. The hero, brave and strong, left home to right a wrong. From the woods came the wolf, so greedy and hungry that he ate what he found. So, the wolf would probably either be on the candy or the eye. And the hero, of course, is probably going to be on the boat because she left home. So, let's try that out and see if that works. Oh. Okay, so that didn't work. We know that the hero, though, needs to stay on the boat. So the wolf is probably on the tree, given that it doesn't work with the other ones. I have a weird feeling something's changed. What is this? Oh, damn. So we got another charm, but this riddle seems to be a little like uh, Red Riding Hood, where Red Riding Hood was going to go visit her grandmother, and the wolf, um, after hearing this from Red Riding Hood, went on ahead and ate the grandmother. So it's possible that it's a mixture of like a hero's tail and Red Riding Hood, but instead of eating like the grandmother, it ate Red Riding Hood instead.
I'm completely blind. There's a sticky note on the computer that has a code. And I didn't see it the first time that I looked at the computer. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so go ahead and feel free to pause any time that I look at files just so you can read them in your leisure. Um, but this first email is basically just talking about an update for the project that they're doing that says Project Nursery Rhymes. And so they've used the series of different items to try to get a altering world event going on, an AWE or a world altering event. And they haven't been able to successfully do one with the riddles or with the rhymes that they've been doing. And the other email was just a guy named, uh, a person named Campbell, Dr. Campbell, uh, Dr. Eugene Campbell. And it says Dr. Eugene Campbell um, has like a lot of expertise in mythology and folklore and stuff like that. So he's just like, thank you for allowing me on this research project. I'll meet you at the parking lot. Another one of those lunch boxes. I've been thinking more about the cult of the tree. What sort of cult refers to themselves as a cult? We're not seeing the full picture yet. Another Alex Casey lunchbox? So eventually the words of affirmation and you can do this turn into fan fiction. I've played a little bit further from here and I've come across an Alex Casey like one um, lunchbox that has a note in it that says hey so I don't know how but my fan fiction seems to have uh, been placed into these lunchboxes and left everywhere if you find them they're private do not read it <laughs> and I was just like I was like that might be a little bit too late I think I already read one and I think the one we just read was the first one <laughs> of their story, either the last page or the first page.
So there are only two enemies up here uh, when you come back this way to get back to the car. They weren't here previously, but after we defeated Nightingale, I'm sure that they appeared. I haven't run across any other besides like the wolves in um, the lower parts of the forest. But I'm wondering if this Taken is somebody who was... Uh, I guess like a previous camper, somebody who was over here but then ended up dying, or they could have been the shop owner, um, or they could have been the person who lived in the um, trailer that's over here. But given that the trailer has a bunch of like symbols and stuff on it, I'm sure that the cultist we just killed is the one that was living there. So, yeah. But let's go ahead and leave the forest. I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to come back here later. But for now, let's go ahead and meet Casey and Alan by the car and uh, get going towards uh, Bright Falls so we can interview him and find out where he was for the last 13 years. Ready to go? Mr. Wake, we're taking you back to our field office in Bright Falls. You can freshen up there, and then we'll talk properly. Before you say anything, I'm totally fine. Don't freak out. Dad shouldn't have even texted you. Logan? No one texted me. What's going on? I'm totally fine. I slipped. That's all. God, it's not the end of the world. Put your father on the phone. Um, okay. Dad, it's Mom. Don't worry, hun. Logan slipped in the shower and bumped her head. She has a slight concussion, but... I'm keeping an eye on her. Lucky I heard her fall. She could have drowned. Jesus, David. Why didn't you call? I tried. It didn't go through. She's fine, really. But what about you? You sound stressed. No, it's a... Uh, just a weird case, that's all. Well, if you need a hint, my years of board game victories tell me... Colonel Mustard did it. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep an eye out for him. <laughs> Love you, Dave. Love you too, honey. Wanna say bye to Logan? Just tell her I love her. Bye for now. Is there anyone you'd like us to reach out to, Mr. Wake? You've been gone a long time. No. No. If they'd be in danger, it'll come for me. Okay, let's talk about something else. Robert Nightingale. Do you know him? 
You were both here in 2010. The Dark Presence got him back then. That's the last time I saw him. 13 years. Oh, fuck me. Tell us about the pages. You had what looks like a title page with you. Return. Is this the name of the story on these pages? The writer's name has been scratched out pretty violently. But your name can still be made out underneath. <laughs> scratched out. Yeah. Scratch. Did you write these pages, Mr. Wake? I'm trying to remember. It's... It's... It's a crazy jumble, like a... Like a nightmare. I, it doesn't... It doesn't make sense. Waking up in places with no memory of how I'd gotten there, it was out of control. I didn't need another mugshot in the fucking tabloids. Had I already done the show? Good to see you, Alan. Uh, uh, this must be an exciting time for you. But tell me, does it ever get old? So does what get old? Publishing a new book. Are you okay there, my friend? You look like you've been cooped up in the writer's room for a few too many years. <laughs> this is exactly how I feel. <laughs> you know, I've waited so long to get my hands on the sequel to Departure. You left us on quite the cliffhanger. We've all been dying to know what it's not a lake, it's an ocean really means. You and me both. Well, our wait is over. Your new book, Initiation, hits the shelves tomorrow. What? That's exactly what every reader will be asking. This book is mind-bending. It's so cerebral. I mean, how would you describe it? A an auto-fictional thought experiment? A, a, a horror story? A postmodern detective story wait this isn't right i i haven't written anything he's so humble okay you got me good prank very funny but yeah i sad to say i, I i've not written this I, i'd remember if i'd written a book right or maybe it was written by your evil double Well played, man. That is spot on. Playing the role here. Pretending the world of the book overlaps our own. Very meta indeed. You see, Initiation tells the story of a fictional writer named Alan Wake, who is trapped in a nightmare, desperately trying to find the manuscript of a novel he has forgotten he has written. The book is set in New York, but it might not be New York at all. He is tormented by his dark, 
doppelganger guided by visions of a fictional detective he has written. That's right. Alex Casey is in this book as well. Uh, I guess we'll just keep doing this the whole show. The joke's on me. But isn't that what you sign up for with auto fiction? No, but seriously, I found the, uh, the structure of the reality you build in the book fascinating. It reminded me of The Matrix. I mean, the writer is physically in his writer's room, trapped there, and he projects himself out to this dark dream of New York through the story he is writing. Uh, like astral projection. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Go on. I should be taking notes here. Uh, this is great stuff. Notes to that other Alan Wake in that room writing this as we speak? Are we all in your story, Alan? <laughs> wow. No, I, I, I wish you every success with your new book, Alan. I hope it's as successful as your best-selling Alex Casey series. Initiation hits the shelves tomorrow. After this, I'm sure we'll all be eagerly awaiting the culmination of this hero's journey trilogy of yours. A book called Return, perhaps. Man, thank you for one of the strangest interviews of my entire career, Alan. <laughs> Always talk of meta narratives. Half expecting to disappear once this scene ends. Hello? It. Something's not right here. I needed to get home to Alice. I really like this aspect of the game because in the first game, the dark place is pretty much just a cabin and a typewriter and a desk. You don't really get to see all of this um, sort of like artificialness to it. It's just one setting. And I like that it's quite possible that Alan could have been writing his, trying to write his way out by putting himself on like a game show or like putting himself in this case on a talk show, on a late night talk show with a host and everything. And we've seen, um, Mr. Door before, he was the brief image that popped up on uh, the screen when the sheriff disappeared. What the hell was that interview? Some kind of joke? Initiation? I never wrote a book called Initiation. This felt like a bad dream. Could make a good horror story. I was a mess. I'd never heard of this talk show or Mr. Door before. None of it felt right. Was I losing my mind? A nice nod to Dr. Darling from Control. If you haven't played it, you should. It has all of the charm of Alan Wake and everything like that. So if you like the Alan Wake universe or if you just in general like games that were written by Sam Lake and Remedy like Quantum Break and this one, then you should definitely play Control.
There was something here. A broken transmission I couldn't quite make out. What was that? A message? Impossible to say. for air this place felt familiar a ghost of a memory surfaced about riding here for countless days a plot board for mapping out a story on the index cards the nightmare that just happened to me a summary of the story so far, but other notes as well. Warnings. I had written them. I couldn't remember what it all meant. The name Scratch filled me with dread. I could trust these words. I had to act on them. You must write to escape. So just like Saga, Alan has his own mind space that's a very stark contrast to hers. Hers is like, has a case board, has a place for coffee, is very home-like, it, it looks like an office, um, has a lot of information in there, and is very kind of like organized, but at the same time a little messy. Whereas with Alan, his mind space is basically like, here's a board to write down plots for your story, here's a radio and a television. Get back to work. <laughs> so right now we have to go back to the typewriter and start again and see if we're able to rewrite ourselves getting out uh, from the story. Welcome back to the show. So, Alan, 
As the uh, creator of the character, how do you feel about this? Sorry, what? I know it can be an awkward question with the man sitting right next to you, but I mean, how do you feel about him in the role of Casey? Does he look the part to you? He looks exactly like I always imagined Casey to be. It's uncanny. Thank you. That means so much to me. I'm a huge fan of your books. So, uh, what's the problem, Alan? Because on more than one occasion, you voiced your reservations about the adaptations. Uh, it's not that. They're their own thing. They've gone with choices that are different from mine. I... I I feel protective about my stories, and these adaptations... Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I just wish I could have been more involved in making them. Well, in that case, you won't have seen this either. We have a clip from the new film, Murder Case Case. Should we roll it, or do you want to say something first, Sam? Nah, just roll it. This city was an old scar that refused to heal. The rain made it fester. It needed the sun, but there was only the night. I was tired. Insomnia covered me like a plastic film. I was watching the world through a rain-slick window, my own reflection haunting the view. I was trying to track down a missing writer. My only clue was a table lamp shaped like an angel. The only thing to shed light on this sordid mystery. That's great. Murder case, Casey. Great job, Sam. Very exciting and very meta. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Wait, stop. What was that about a writer? About a lamp? Nice little Easter egg nod <laughs> with Sam's face. So the background of the first Max Payne, and I think the second Max Payne has it a little bit, is that in the games, if you haven't played them, Sam is um, playing the model of Max. And so whenever you get like a cutscene and a major story beat it'd be played out in like a sort of noir detective comic book and there will be pictures of sam um making like this weird kind of face that he just did it's just like a scrunched up like he just ate a lemon type of face and so um he would take pictures of himself and then kind of push it through like a filter so that it looks like a comic book. And friends and family also had a hand in the game as well, uh, in being like background characters and stuff. And then when when the game got really popular, we we did lose a little bit of that like sour sour looking face like he's sucking on a lemon head or something like that so we did lose that and went in more full option for like the 3d cutscenes like we got with three but in alan wake the first game i think you can when you watch the tv there's commercials of sam lake on like talk shows just basically talking about uh, the game in general, <laughs> and he you know, like, do the face, do the face, and he does the little Max Payne face, and everyone's like, hey, he did it, so it's like that Simpsons theme, that Simpsons meme where they're like, hey, say the line, say the line, and then Bart says the line, and everybody's like, yay, so, yeah. <laughs>
no raid. There you are, Tom. Oh, not so much evil that not a bit of good as well. Not one without the other. <laughs> good to see you. Hey, I, I can't seem to find my way out of here. Can you point me to the exit? <laughs> of course, Tom. The work will instruct its maker. I was gonna get something from the basement for you, but you can get it yourself now. Uh, the more cooks, the worse the soup. <laughs> Have we met before? Are you trapped in the dark place too? You remember Ahti, the janitor. You can't be lost if you don't worry about where you are headed. So don't worry, Tom. The sun will shine even into a heap of twigs. Just remember to turn on the lights. It won't take long when you get to work. What do you want me to get from the basement? And my name's Alan, not Tom. Yeah, yeah, but I got up a man's. A man, but a man with a tool makes two, Tom. Egane. <laughs> and a man with a tool can build his own exit. It's in a shoebox, in the basement where you left it. <laughs> Safe as in the Lord's purse. Here's the key. I've been trying to find a way to escape the dark place. Any suggestions? He who mulls about his troubles is the prisoner of his troubles. It's not easy to get out. But don't you worry, Tom. The home is still there where the heart is. I often think about it when I mop the floor and look into the puddle. Water is the memory of the world. Water finds its way. The janitor was a bit out there, but still a friendly face. I had to trust the basement would get me out of here. That is Ati. He is a prominent figure in control. He helps the main character, Jesse, um, with, like her journey through the FBC and also he gives you tasks. He is a very nice face if not weird so <laughs> definitely if you see him talk to him and I'm glad to see him in this game because he's a he's a nice little addition. An old lamp and a shoebox. Was this what the janitor had left for me? The lamp felt significant. 
A tool for bringing light to the darkness. I felt a magnetic pull between the lamp and the light overhead. Whoa! When the light jumped into my lamp, the whole room changed, like something in a dream. Opening a way forward, the lamp was humming, the bulb glowed. It held the light now. I felt another surge from the lamp. I could use it again. The glow in the lamp went out, shifting the light in the room. The light carved out something new from the darkness. Since we're getting to the end of the video, I'm going to go ahead and say my goodbyes now. So thank you so much for joining us. We are making progress. Even though it feels like it's not a lot of progress, this is a lot of progress. We've got an angel lamp to help us, like open doorways and to change and alter like locations and yeah we'll be able to get through uh hopefully the station so with that being said i'll see you in the next one and you guys have a good rest of your day bye wants to draw me i'm losing myself i have to fight it i have to remember the clicker the light switch i lost it but i have the lamp now the lamp the switch was cut from this place is a nightmare not real and yet more real than anything the danger and the horror are real it feeds off my mind twisting whatever it takes into psychotic reality i'm trapped here I write to escape. I've tried this many times, written countless stories, forgotten how many. I keep failing, but I must keep trying. I use the story to dive deeper. Every word I write is a step forward on this spiral of the darkness. I dive to the bottom to find the answer, the, the map, the key, the compass, the best to find, to form a door leading out. But how do you open a door that's not a door? At the bottom of an ocean that's not an ocean, and a lake? That's not like...